Is the biology also ancient? Well, I think the answer to that is yes. It's simply a consistency argument. If the astronomy's old, if the geology's old, then the biology must also be old. Biology must be an ancient biology. Ancient biology appears throughout the scripture. In particular, we find that the creation of life in Genesis 1 is, and this is the phrase, according to their kinds. And this is stated 10 times. Now, where does this phrase come from? This phrase is based on an ancient phenomenological perspective of life. In other words, as the ancients looked at life, what did they see? They saw bird kinds, they saw fish kinds, and they saw cow kinds and all sorts of other kinds. So from their perspective, there are these basic groups of living organisms. And with that being the case, what do we have? We have the taxonomy of the day. In other words, an ancient taxonomy, the best science of the day. And this is exactly what we would have thought. Ancient biology also extends to the reproduction of life, which also would have been according to their kinds. That is, living organisms reproduce according to their kinds. Now, why would the ancients have thought that? Well, let's take cows. What did they see? A cow would give birth to a cow, would give birth to a cow. It made perfect sense that cows reproduce according to their kinds. Now, there is a very significant origins implication with regards to this type of thinking. The ancients would have asked the question, where do cows come from? All they ever saw was a cow giving birth to a cow and they extended this back into time and very logically would have came to the conclusion there must have been an original cow. That God created an original cow and that's where cows come from. This thinking process of taking a cow, gives birth to a cow, gives birth to a cow and extending it back into the past is known as retrojection. And it comes from two Latin words Retro, meaning back or backwards, and yukari, which means to throw or to cast. And retrojection is a very important concept to grasp in the origins debate and to understand how ancient peoples thought. Formally defined, it's simply this. It's taking present experience and casting it back in time to explain the past. And today we have a wonderful example of this type of thinking, and I love these TV programs, it's this CSI thinking, crime scene investigations, where they take present physical evidence, they put it together, and then they try to reconstruct the past. So CSI thinking, similar to the ancients and trying to make sense of how the world came about, it is the reconstruction of the past by using the present. This brings us back to the notion of de novo creation, creation that is quick and complete. And now we can look at the de novo creation of life. In other words, the creation of living organisms. And this ancient notion is based on retrojection. That's why this notion of retrojection is so important. What did the ancients see? Well, a cow gave birth to a cow, and they asked the question, where do cows come from? And they extended, or in other words, they retrojected their experience of cows giving birth to cows, giving birth to cows, all the way back to the original cow, which was a cow that was created de novo, quickly and completely. And this ancient notion of creation 
is what we see in Genesis 1. We see living organisms were created de novo, quick and complete. As we've seen earlier in Genesis 1, the three-tier universe was created de novo, quick and complete. And this ancient understanding of origins also occurs with living organisms. On day three, plants are created de novo, quick and complete. On day five, birds and sea creatures are created de novo, quick and complete. And on day six, land animals and humans are created de novo, quick and complete. So when it comes to this ancient notion of the de novo creation of life, it is based on the retrojection of an ancient taxonomy. The ancients saw that living organisms are separate kinds. The ancients saw that living organisms reproduce according to their kinds. And so these experiences that the ancients had are retrojected back into time. And so we come to the conclusion that the de novo creation of life is an ancient biology of origins. It's an ancient science. Now, on to Adam. Or to put it another way, the not Adam position. Now, I understand this is a really challenging issue for many of us as Christians, and I really wrestled with this issue. Now, you will notice in this presentation, it's taken me about 40 slides to get to finally talking about Adam. There's a lot of basic work that needs to be done in terms of interpreting the scripture before we deal with Adam. So I'll only make one small suggestion. Please have a pretty good grasp of these opening 40 slides before you start wrestling with the Adam issue, because I'll warn you, this is tough stuff. I certainly appreciate that. Earlier in the presentation, we saw the ancients asking questions like, what about bird kinds? Where did they come from? What about fish kinds? Where did they come from? And what about cow kinds? How were they created? And of course, and I think you know where I'm going, the ancients would have also asked, what about humankind? Where do humans come from? What would ancient peoples have experienced? They would have seen a human gives birth to a human, who then gives birth to a human. And this is what they would have seen. And then asking the question, where do humans ultimately come from? They would have taken this experience and retrojected it back into the past. And who would they have come up with? Well, yes, of course, there he is, Adam. And we see this in the scriptures. We see in the scripture the de novo creation of 